ARM stocks up 175% in just two years, trading around $152 a share. But everyone's asking, I mean, can it keep going or is the rally about to run out of power? Because while most chip makers are fighting for manufacturing dominance, ARM doesn't even build ships. It licenses the blueprints and takes a cut every time somebody else makes one. That's like being paid every single time someone uses your design to print money. And right now, those royalties, they're booming. Revenue's up 34% year over year. Operating margins are climbing past 41%. And major tech giants are lining up to license ARM's next generation architecture. But here's where things start to get tricky. Arm's spending nearly $700 million on research and development. Competition from Risk V is heating up. And at $150 plus stock price, how much of the AI gold rush is already baked in? Because it's one thing to ride the AI wave, and it's another to stay on board when it breaks. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you the one metric I think actually matters for ARM's future, what analysts are betting on, and whether the stock's still a buy after this 175% run. Hey, what's up? My name is Rick Orford. I've been trading since 1999, and no, I'm not a financial advisor. That is a good thing. I break down the numbers so retail investors like us can make smarter, more confident decisions with our money. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. And you all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by almost six times. Go to fool.com slash Rico to get your 10 stock picks right now. So let's get into ARM because beneath the headlines, this story might be much bigger than anyone thinks. ARM Holdings is a semiconductor company based in the UK. The company was officially founded in 1990 and has been operating for approximately 35 years. That's three and a half decades of quietly powering the tech world behind the scenes. However, what sets ARM apart from most chip companies is that they don't actually manufacture the chips. They design the blueprints for the processors and then license those designs to other companies. So they're the brains behind the technology earning money, and they earn money every time companies like Qualcomm and Samsung manufacture these chips. And that means that ARM can scale faster with lower costs because they're not spending billions of dollars on factories. So what exactly does ARM produce? Well, they design energy-efficient processors that power a wide range of devices. And energy-efficient here is key. In technology, that translates directly to performance and battery life, two things that every manufacturer wants. Their target customers are the semiconductor manufacturers, the tech giants, and device makers in pretty much every industry that you can think of. If you've got a smartphone in your pocket right now, there's a very good chance that it's running on an ARM-based chip. Seriously, ARM's design is everywhere, even in places you'd never expect. Actually, Nearly every smartphone on the market today uses ARM's architecture. But it's not just about phones anymore. They, their designs are also powering data centers, cars, smart home devices, and increasingly in AI systems. And that last one, AI, that's the big story right now. It's what's driving this entire new wave of investor interest. Well, here's how it all happened. Back in 2016, a Japanese company called SoftBank acquired ARM for $32 billion and took it private. That was one of the biggest tech buyouts of the decade and a signal of how much potential SoftBank saw early on. Then in September 2023, ARM came back to the public markets through an IPO on the NASDAQ. And the timing couldn't have been better, right as AI mania started heating up. Now, let's talk about how the stock is doing because that's probably why you're here, right? At the time of recording, ARM stock trades around $152 a share. Over the past year, the stock has traded between $80 and $183. That's a wild range, nearly 130% swing from low to high, which tells you that volatility is part of the story. 
Year to date, though, the stock is up 23%, and over the last 52 weeks, it's gained just 1%. But if you look back two years, the stock has gained 175%, and that kind of run doesn't happen without something big shifting under the hood. So what is it? What's driving this momentum, at least in the longer time frame? Well, it's AI, right? As companies rush to build out AI infrastructure, ARM's chip designs are becoming increasingly important in data centers. And this is the kind of shift that can reshape an entire industry. And ARM is in the middle of it right now. I mean, look, the x86 processors, right, that Intel and AMD makes, that the, it's dominated data centers for decades. But now we're seeing the adoption of ARM-based chips, which can represent a new market for the company. If that trend continues, I could see ARM going from being the smartphone chip company to being the backbone of modern AI computing. But let me be clear about something. When you see a stock that gained 175% in two years, you have to ask yourself, how much of all of that good news is already baked into the price, right? It's something we discuss often on my Discord group, because every rally eventually faces a moment of reckoning. And the smart money they always check the fundamentals first. So with that, let's have a look at what ARM reported for this quarter. For second quarter fiscal 2026, revenue rose 34% to $1.13 billion, which is its third straight quarter crossing that $1 billion mark. And doing that three quarters in a row, that's consistency. Now, revenue came from two segments. First, there's royalty revenue that increased 21% year over year, to $620 million. And this is what ARM earns every time a chip based on their design is shipped to a customer. It's just like how songwriters get paid every time their song plays on the radio. More chips that are shipped, the more ARM collects. And it, even if they never touch a piece of that silicon. And growth, it came from everywhere. Smartphones, data centers, cars, IoT, Internet of Things. This broad base is really important because it means that ARM's not just dependent on one single market. Diversification like that protects them when one sector slows down. And the other revenue stream is licensing. This segment increased 56% to $515 million year over year. That's huge because it means that companies are betting on ARM's future technology, not just their existing technology. And that's long-term confidence money. You don't pay that unless you see something big coming. Okay, but what do these numbers really mean beyond the surface? I mean, the increase in royalty revenue, I mean, it was driven by ARM's newer architecture and a feature called Neoverse Compute Subsystems, or CSS. Think of it as a high-performance blueprint that earns ARM a bigger cut every time it's used. And these command higher royalties than older designs. Also, ARM chips are now being used in data centers, where economics are way better than the traditional markets. So yeah, they've upgraded from smartphones to servers, and the margins have followed. And this licensing revenue growth makes things really that much more interesting. It means that the major tech companies are making big bets on ARM for products that are still in development. In this quarter alone, ARM signed three CSS deals. That brings them to 19 total licenses across 11 different companies. That's not just growth. That's future revenue that we as investors can bank on. Now, let's see how profitable the business actually is. On an adjusted basis, ARM's operating margin hit 41.1%, and that's up from 38.6% last year. So they're keeping more of every dollar they make. Now, you may have noticed that I said adjusted. Adjusted or non-gap means the company is reporting results after removing some specific one-time or unusual costs to make its performance look more like normal, a normal ongoing business. It's basically a cleaner view of what the company really earns quarter on quarter. So as the company grows revenue, they're keeping more of each dollar for profit. For a licensing business like this, that's exactly 
what you want to see. Because licensing scales like software, low overhead, high margins, and massive upside. At the same time, adjusted EPS increased 30% to 39 cents a share compared to the same period last year. And earnings per share that's rising tells you that management's execution is matching the hype. As for the balance sheet, Arm's cash and cash equivalents reached $2.5 billion, which gives it the financial flexibility that it's going to need for future R&D and expansion. And the company also generated $567 million in operating cash flow and $411 million in adjusted free cash flow this quarter. And cash flow is king, right? It's what keeps the lights on when the markets get shaky. But it's also worth mentioning that Arm spent $691 million on R&D, its research and development, this quarter alone on an adjusted basis, up 36%. This is heavy spending, and it does put pressure on margins. Of course, in this industry, R&D isn't an expense, it's survival. I mean, in the semiconductor industry, if you're not innovating, you're dying. And ARM clearly aims to stay ahead of the curve by squeezing out every last bit of profit today. They're playing offense, not defense. And that's exactly what we as investors want to see. For the third quarter, fiscal 2026, management expects revenue to come in around $1.22 billion, give or take $50 million. At the midpoint, that's roughly 8% sequential growth and would be another record. They're also guiding for adjusted operating expenses to come in around $720 million and about $0.41 cents per share in earnings. That means they expect margins to continue expanding. And if they can do that again, that would mark the fourth straight quarters of billion-dollar revenue. This is a big psychological win on Wall Street. But we do need to be realistic about a few things. I mean, licensing revenue can be lumpy, right? It depends on when the big deals close, right? You might have a great quarter followed by a quieter one, even if the overall trend is positive. So investors need to focus on the long-term curve, not the noise between quarters. Also, there's an emerging competitor, Risk Five. It's an open source alternative that some companies are exploring. Open source means the designs are free, zero cost, and they could undercut ARM's pricing power if adoption grows. Definitely something I'd be watching. Now, I'm going to be covering more of the risks and potential growth drivers for ARM and other companies in separate videos. So be sure to watch out for them to stay up to date because understanding both sides of the story is where the real edge lies. So with all that out of the way, is ARM stock a buy at these levels? Well, to answer that, let's see what the experts say. A consensus among 29 analysts rate ARM stock a moderate buy with a Average score of 4.31 out of 5. That's solid confidence, not euphoric, but optimistic. And that rating has remained relatively stable over the last three months. The high price target among analysts is $215 a share, and that suggests as much as 41% upside from today's levels. So if Wall Street's right, there's still gas left in the tank. But what about you? Do you believe in what ARM is doing? Or is it going to be an overtaken yet again in the AI arms race? Because the real question isn't whether arms winning today, it's whether it can lead tomorrow. Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps others find the video, it supports the channel, and you won't miss out on my future deep dives. Well, that's it for me today in this video. I wanted to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.